Hello and welcome to another episode of Monday Markets. As always, you're brought to you by Woo. Links available in the description below. I won't take too long given we had a show on Sunday, so I'll just outline what I'm looking at from a technical perspective for this week. Really, my focus is on the daily time frame and the intraday time frames. Uh, the weekly time frame is interesting because it closed above this highest weekly close at 68.2. That's a pretty good weekly close, but obviously that doesn't mean the market has to continue immediately, right? So one recent example of this that we discussed in similar fashion on this very show was the weekly close above 64.2, which was here. And at the time, the discussion was that, hey, whenever you get strong weekly closes or weekly attempts to shift market structure, you essentially have one of two options. Option one is aggressive continuation, where pretty close to the close, the market in the next one, two days or in that same following week starts to rally and it doesn't give you much of a pullback or consolidation and it's more of a trigger for momentum. And the second option is that even after a good looking high time frame close, the market instead offers you a pullback, sort of a higher low after a higher high, and then it shoots off in the direction of the originally bullish close. So I think a similar framework can be essentially applied to where we are now, which is to say the close above 68.2 was good and now the market has to demonstrate whether it's going to be an aggressive continuation type of week or two or whether we'll have a similar outcome whereby there's a deeper pullback and then strength. Obviously, there's a third outcome, which is that there is no strength. We're all going to die and this is the top. But obviously, that's sort of the built-in invalidation for any of these ideas, right? So if you consider what an attempt at a market structure shift looks like, this is our all-important support resistance level, market structure level, whatever, you get a break, right? Your options are, if the market isn't a scammy piece of shit, that it just keeps going post close so you know at most it offers a shallow pullback or no pullback at all and essentially shoots off in the direction uh, of the break or it offers a much more torturous laborious high time frame pullback and so you know if you're buying the breakout at that point you're not having a good time when it comes back to uh, the origin so to speak but then eventually resolves in your favor and the third outcome is obviously if you're just wrong whereby you know the market starts to pull back so you're not getting your immediate continuation type of idea but then when it, where it reaches the area that should be the higher low it pukes through that as well and makes a lower low and at that point both bullish arguments are essentially dead in the water right so it's about giving the market a chance are you going to be bullish aggressively are you going to be bullish having put in a higher low or are you not going to be bullish at all so that's kind of the decision tree when faced with positive high time frame closes. So this is a positive high time frame close. Now, yes, within the context of range, that resistance, so on and so forth, that doesn't really change the equation, right? Same with a range. Are you going to pull back to the midpoint before breaking up or are you just going to offer a shallow pullback at the range high before accepting through it and moving higher? It's the same decision tree, just different technical terms for the same, for the same market phenomenon, essentially. So... When assessing this, I think it's best done through lower time frames. And all in all, I don't think the process is going to be particularly different from what we did here. And what we did here was discuss where, where is the plausible higher low level uh, and also then what would it look like for bullish continuation. So that, that kind of one, two, three framework that I just outlined there, we essentially apply that to the chart as it is now uh, using slightly lower time frame levels. So we don't have to wait a week to get any sort of trading idea. Now, with that in mind, uh, the daily time frame is the one that's at risk of looking the most shitty or at least sort of presenting the strongest case for a pullback. Uh, and that is because having reached this weekly level of resistance, uh, we are on the cusp of a daily bearish engulfing candle. By daily bearish engulfing candle, I don't mean just like some totally arbitrary Japanese candlestick stuff, uh, but it's just evidence of rejection at resistance. And in this case, by engulfing, I mean a spike above previous day's high and then a close below previous day's low. And that's just the sign of weakness, I think, for in the most straightforward technical sense, taking place not in the middle of nowhere, but in an area of high time frame resistance. So if that plays out, then I think the bias for the next one to three days, maybe even for this trading week, uh, would be that, you know, sort of probabilistically, if you're assuming one aggressive continuation versus two, bit of a pullback before giving it a chance, that sort of favors two, because you have a decently high time frame that looks more pullbacky than it does aggressive continuation, right? So I think if this is your daily close, uh, even if you're high time frame bullish, I think you should be skewing more towards the, okay, we're getting a bit of a pullback idea now, as opposed to we closed above, now we're gonna keep fucking sending, right? Uh, again, as a reminder, option one is we closed above, we're gonna send. Option two is we closed above, but it's gonna pull back. Option three is we're all gonna die. Uh, so I think if the daily time frame in that context starts to look shit, it's more support for option two than it is option one, generally speaking. Uh, so that obviously then raises the question, uh, what would, well, first of all, if it is option two and we're going to have the, you know, it's more likely 
or at least we should consider the market pulling back to lower levels of support. Where are those levels? Like, for example, for the previous idea on the weekly, that was 58K. Is there a current updated equivalent for that? Uh, and then we have to discuss, uh, what if this is a trap, scam, Monday dump that gets fully retraced, hashtag turnaround Tuesday? If all of that is true, uh, where are the triggers or levels for aggressive continuation? That, that's really it. That's, I think, the most simple, straightforward framework. If you have a good level, if you have a good close, if you have a potential market structure shift, if you have some sort of imbalance, is it going to go immediately or is it going to pull back and then go? And then if you're wrong, then both of those ideas are dead in the water anyway. So to answer the first question in terms of if this is a more shallow uh, pullback, where could it end up? I think in this instance, the original, uh, there are kind of two weekly levels that come to mind. Uh, the first is the level that we've had for a while, which is here at 64.2. Uh, the re and that seems quite far away, and it is, and there is a slightly earlier candidate for that as well. Uh, but purely from a support resistance point of view, that is just a very clear weekly level, uh, and it wouldn't violate market structure for the market to come back here, right? So if we consider what happened at the previous juncture, uh, from the pullback at you know 66 to 58, essentially, uh, we had the break and close above here, uh, and the pullback was pretty close to, famously, didn't get fills hit, filled at that level, uh, but that's essentially where it traded to. Uh, the higher low level equivalent was uh, 58, 59K. So then if this is then another break in market structure, be it through this high or this high on a closing basis, if we ask the same question, where could the market pull back to that A, has weekly structure, B, wouldn't violate market structure. So is there support resistance there and is market structure intact? What levels are appropriate uh, for these two criteria to be met? Uh, I think there are a couple. One is, as mentioned, the same 64.2 level because suppose the market were to come down to here uh, and then try to establish support that would still be a higher low relative to where the last swing point was right so we know that if, even if the market pulls all the way back to 64.2 i know I, I say all the way back like it's in fucking narnia and it obviously isn't but if the market does pull back to 64.2 uh, it's still weekly support and it would still be a higher low relative to the last low. So it, it satisfies both of those, not rules, but principles, essentially. One, there is support there. We know it's a previous weekly level. Two, it would still be a higher low, therefore market structure isn't violated. So that's a decent candidate in terms of uh, if it doesn't keep going aggressively and instead offers a pullback, where are those reasonable areas? I think 64.2 is a valid candidate. Uh, are there other valid candidates? I think so. I think there's another one more tentatively at, where is this, 65.6. And the reason I say more tentatively is because I think 64.2 is the better level uh, and 65.6 is the kind of deviation high, if you recall. So our weekly commentary at the time was that this is our weekly resistance, right? This is the level. We had a Failed breakout, retest, that gave us our dip. So that's the real level. And in general, when I'm dealing with these types of structures, right, let's say this is our resistance, you have attempt at resistance, breakout, failed breakout, sort of resistance again, whatever. Uh, generally speaking, I will put a lot of emphasis on the original level, and I won't put as much emphasis on the deviation high. And it works the other way around as well, right? If you have a level of support, you have kind of support established, breakdown, failed breakdown, whatever, back of the level, etc. I will generally give preference to the level itself, and I'm not going to put a lot of weight onto the deviation high or low made in that instance. Because for me, uh, this is the real level, right, where the trading took place, and this is the excess portion that's not as important. So if we consider that on the weekly time frame, then the conclusion we're left with is that 64.2 is the quote-unquote real weekly level, and 65.6 is the excess portion. So it's, a, so it's a worse level, but if the market is very strong, then it could just, you know, turn around there. It doesn't need the strongest level in the world. That's why it's tentative, though. Just to explain that, 64.2 is in bold, if you will, or, you know, a full line because it's the better level. 65.6 is still a valid candidate because, again, remember, what we're asking is... Criteria number one, or criterion number one, is there support resistance there? And criterion number two, is market structure still uh, intact if the market pulls back to that level? And by both of these measures, 65.6 is also valid alongside 64.2. It's still a level of support. It's not as good as 64.2, but it's still a level of support. And is market structure intact? Well, yes, uh, obviously by definition, because if it goes to 64.2, that's still a higher low. And if it goes to 65.6, it's still a higher low relative to the last swing. So it's just as valid, um, but it's not as good a level. Now again, I'm not ad adding 100 charts, 100 levels to this chart, it's still mostly straightforward as far as if the market does pull back, where are reasonable areas to do business? I think those two uh, levels kind of stand out essentially and they also make a lot of sense on intraday timeframes as well. So in doing so, we've essentially answered the 
sort of solved for one part of that decision tree, right? Again, as a reminder, number one is aggressive continuation. Number two is the pullback. So we've answered this. We've done number two. What are the reasonable areas for pullback? 65.6, 64.2. Anything below that, I think, starts becoming a bit dodgy and precarious because you've sort of retraced uh, the entire impulse at that stage and the entire high-low structure starts to look uh, a bit in danger. It could still be salvageable, but you still need the weekly closes to uh, look pretty reasonable at that point. So nonetheless, we've, we've answered this. If there is a pullback, what are the reasonable areas that are at support and remain and sort of keep market structure intact? 65.6, 64.2. Okay, fantastic. We've done that, right? So now let's look at the first portion, which is to say if this weekly close ends up being aggressive and Monday is a scam dump, uh, how do we take advantage of that? What levels are relevant? Uh, I think in general, in this instance, the weekly close and four hour uh, support resistance is probably best. So if we then outline the weekly close here, sorry, the weekly open, not the weekly close, good God, uh, the weekly open at 69k, right? So we're going to put that in there, weekly open, and we're going to make it pink because that makes your levels work better or purple rather. Uh, and then I think on the four hour, there's a nice little shelf built up right below it as well at around 67.8. Maybe we can be a bit more charitable and put it at 69k ish. Sorry, six, yeah. 68k round number. Let me just make sure I'm not hallucinating and anchor this thing for once. If we want to be conservative, yeah, 68, 68.1. Okay. So in this instance, if this Monday move is entirely a scam, then if, if the market is primed for more aggressive continuation, what might that look like? Well, in general, if you consider the anatomy of a weekly candle, right? Let's say this is our weekly candle here. This is its kind of current uh, shape, if you will. This we know is the weekly open. What you would want to see as the market progresses is that you know you get a push down into Monday. This is how the candle is trading. Then it starts pushing up towards the open. And then when it's above the open, it starts to turn green, right? That's sort of what we're looking for in terms of development if the week turns around. So right now, forgive my uh, juvenile drawings, <clears throat> juvenile drawings, voice crack, puberty. This is what the weekly candle looks like right now. This is the open, this is the close, high, low. If Monday is a scam, that would mean that the red part is BS and it's actually going to be green and hey, it's just weakness on Monday that's going to be retraced. Uh, that would necessarily mean that the market recovers from trading below the weekly open, meaning it's red, and must become green by trading above the weekly open. So that's why we have the weekly open here, because if the market, say, were to start to develop in that direction, you get some sort of trading and then starts to push above. And as soon as it starts flipping above the weekly open, you turn from red into green, and then you're hoping to capture the candle body, body portion uh, above the weekly open, right? So... All of that to say for aggressive continuation, uh, if you want to be really aggressive with it, there's some sort of four-hour support resistance at 68.1k. If you get a decent invalidation there, that potentially is puntable, although I don't love it because there's always that risk of a lower high. Uh, I'd rather give it the weekly open and give it, a, give, you know, give yourself a chance to chase it personally. Uh, and if you're wrong, you're wrong. Tough tits. It also depends on what kind of invalidations develop in the interim. But in general, this is going to be aggressive. Your first trouble area is 68.1, and the real kind of potential inflection point that might speed things up if Monday if this Monday dump is really a scam is trading above the weekly open at 69 69.1 K ish okay um so where does that leave us from a trading perspective well let's rechart this thing with all the things that we discussed so we have this here as our deep pullback but not dead yet at 64.2 we have this Shallow pullback level bit shite, but YOLO as our other level. We have our weekly open. Weekly open, please turn green and give me some momentum. Momentum. Uh, and then we had that rough looking four hour intraday level, uh, pretty close to the weekly open as low time frame gambling piece of shit please flip and send into weekly open and beyond beyond that's what we're left with and i think that's more than adequate as far as a trading plan for the week now obviously the daily close is going to be helpful here because if it closes as an engulfing candle as mentioned the probability skews towards this portion being hit rather than this portion being hit 
Uh, but in any case, those are the two areas to monitor and in which to do business. And I think I've outlined at least as clearly as I'm capable of uh, how I think approaching them might make sense, whereby you're essentially looking for aggressive continuation. Uh, if it's, you know, the first scenario, the the one we outlined at the beginning of this video, and then you're looking for signs of life, signs of support, if it's a deeper pullback in this box. You know, four levels, two areas or boxes, if you will, for different outcomes. And obviously, you know, as mentioned at the very beginning as well, the third one, which is to say the market just keeps puking and turns into a total piece of shit, uh, I think a lot of market structure-based arguments start to become really treacherous, sub-64K. Um, yeah, I I'm not too sure. I don't like any of those levels. Maybe at most for a wick, sub 64k but again given these are based on the weekly time frame even if it starts wicking below 64k if if it's going to be bullish it needs to close above it in any case and that's still more or less captured by this box given it's a high time frame level so you can kind of expect wicks both ways uh that's it this is as clear as i can make btc at least it's what, it's what makes sense to me and that's uh what's on my watch list um nothing too different for eth i had a level on this somewhere that i deleted um you should really watch Casual Friday for ETH analysis. Don is better than I am. I think two point whatever, two point seven, two point eight range high has been hit, and realistically, this this is going to trade more or less in tandem with BTC. And ETH BTC still doesn't look amazing. Uh, I don't think the technical levels for this thing are as clear as they are for BTC. Uh, at most, if, if there were, you know, if I were pressed for an opinion in terms of where is a reasonable pullback level where the market still looks salvageable, I would say 2.6k. Anything sub 2.6k, you start erasing a lot of this impulse and momentum and, uh, you know, you kind of break market structure in the form of this low here. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of. So realistically, it's like 2.7, 2.8 range high. And in terms of where can it pull back to if it's going to be slightly more pronounced without looking like the entire thing is a scam, uh, I'd be reluctant to let it go much past 2.5 2.6 right there's a lot of stuff there that should hold if the market isn't a total piece of shit um that's all i've got i'm gonna keep it i, I said i'd keep it brief i lied i i apologize but if that was somewhat helpful from a framework point of view uh please let me know hope you'll have a wonderful start to your week thank you to we for supporting the show uh go sign up to trade there if you haven't already if you're not from a restricted jurisdiction to support the show yada yada like comment subscribe thank you for listening and i'll speak to you friday yes friday goodbye